There's my new power supply that I've just got from AliExpress. It's a 700 watt ATX power supply. The model is SD700. I'm sure you can find many like these and others similar to this on AliExpress and eBay and whatnot. So yeah, it claims to be 700 watts, but I am very suspicious of that number. So here is the unit in question. You can see it's got a rather large 120 millimeter fan on the top uh, with RGB, of course, which we are going to uh, rip out. Claims 40 amps at 12 volt, 15 amps on 5 volt rail, 15 amps on the 3.3 volt rail, so it's a fairly hefty power supply. Well, none of these connectors are labelled, they're not too bad to figure out what they are. This is a CPU connector, so this is a 12 volt 8 pin, which can be broken into two for the 4 pin. We've got some SATA connectors, some Molex connectors over there. This is the uh, 24 pin ATX connector. And then we have two of these 8 pin GPU connectors. Interestingly, they have two sets of cables that are paralleled up, so they both go back to the power supply. Same with this one here. Here is our 120mm fan, which has RGB of course. I've gone ahead and just ripped off this yellow wire, which is a ground for the LEDs. It goes back to that unpopulated connector on the circuit board. This is on a connector, so we can unplug that and get that out of the way. Having a look inside the power supply, you can see it's fairly minimal in here. It's as simple as it gets for an ATX power supply. There's no power factor correction. There's no buck converter riser card or any of that. So the capacitors are fairly small as well compared to other power supplies. And the heat sinks are just basically a piece of aluminium that have been stamped. There's no cast fins or no extrusions or anything like that. Uh, this has shocky diodes for its rectification. So there's no active rectification using MOSFETs, which makes it slightly less efficient, but for what it is, it's perfectly fine. I do doubt this will be able to output 700 watts. You'd be lucky to get 500 watts, but we're going to actually uh, test this out on Fermark and put a decent GPU in the computer and have a pretty hefty CPU as well. And we're going to tax this thing and see how it actually handles. Here's the plug that's supplied. I believe this is a European plug, but I have done a continuity test and also polarity test on this cable. The earth is functional and the neutral and live go to the correct terminals. Here's the uh, inside of the power supply again. Interestingly, the IEC connector, this is the neutral, white is the phase. You are switching the neutral through the on-off switch, so when you switch this off, phase is still through all the circuitry, but it does function, but it is a bit bizarre how they've done it, so that's fine. Of course, it's earthed, which is good to see the chassis as well as the circuit board. You can see where they've ground off the paint underneath the standoffs, which are basically just stamped into the steel chassis. And that's also quite good to see. So the ground plane on the circuit board is actually connected to the chassis. So if there was a fault on the circuit board, it should trip or blow the fuse. And it's good to see that there is actually a fuse in here. So if there was a fault, it would blow the fuse. This here is unpopulated. I'm sure there was some interference suppression and whatnot that was uh, going on, but they've opted not to use that for cost cutting, I'm sure. We do have this small choke here, just to take the edge off. It goes into this uh, bridge rectifier. These two capacitors here. 200 volt, 820 microfarad. So these are, those are going to be wired in series when it's in 230 volt operation, or they are going to be used as a voltage doubler when used in 120 volt situations. These two transistors here, I'm assuming those are in-channel MOSFETs. I tried finding a part number for them on Google, but nothing turns up a result, so no idea what those are. That looks like a, um, a shunt resistor of some sort. A smaller transformer there, I'm not too sure what that's actually doing. Here is our 5 volt supply. When you apply power to the power supply, this is always going to be running. This is rated for 2 amps. So here's the uh, 12 volt transformer and it will be switched from those two in-channel MOSFETs. The um, interesting thing is there's two double diodes that rectify that, and then there's two transistors by the look of it, which also do the buck conversion for the uh, 5 volt and 3.3 volt using that transformer there. And you can see a small feedback winding on that, and two other windings. The electrolytic capacitors on the secondary side look very minimalistic. So the circuit board underneath, there are no chips. Traces look fairly good, everything looks well soldered, the quality is not too bad. The 
there is this layer of plastic insulating the bottom of the circuit board to the chassis and also there is this piece of foam here for some reason i haven't seen that in any other power supplies so it's a bit strange so here is another power supply that i've just pulled open this one is a well used one manufactured by cooler master it's rated for 500 watts and just having a look at the internal construction you can see the physical size of the transformer is much larger you can see the secondary capacitors are also much larger there is a lot more going on within this power supply with riser cards and whatnot doing various things this here will be the buck converter for the 5 volt and the 3.3 volt it's a lot more sophisticated in design you can see there's more transformers more components the heat sinks are generally larger those capacitors are also bigger so you can compare this to the fairly sparse layout of this power supply which is rated for 200 more watts so the question is what would i want this power supply for you certainly would not want to use this in a high-end build where you have a decent gpu this is probably all right for old computers that are worth nothing and you just want to have a play around with them that's pretty much why i bought this power supply but i would be definitely staying away from anything with a decent gpu or anything modern this has potential to uh, kill your motherboard or other components if it all goes wrong so we'll see how this goes so measuring the thickness of the steel this is made of it is quite flimsy compared to other power supplies it's only 0.56 of a mil thick which includes the powder coating on both sides of this piece of steel so it's very thin but once it's together it does hold its shape i guess okay so the power supply is reassembled the uh, next thing will be to fire it up Something else I forgot to mention was there is a screw that was just floating around in the bottom of the box and I could not find inside the power supply where that actually came from so it must have been an extra one that they dropped in at the factory. Looks like a screw holding in possibly one of these switches on the on the uh, back panel, not sure, so interesting. Power supply is connected to mains, I'm probing the uh, auxiliary 5 volt, 5.1 volts, that looks good. Put our jumper in there. The fan runs nice and quiet. 3.3 volt looks good. This is the 5 volt. That also looks good. This is the 12 volt. That looks good as well. Here we have our power supply installed. Ignore the horrible cable management. I've gone ahead and put in a reasonably large graphics card. This is an older Radeon R9-280X. We've also got a third gen i7 with 16 gigs of RAM. So here's the computer running Windows 10 and we're just about to stress test it. Now we're measuring the fan speed at idle. We just want to make sure that the speed increases as the thermal load on the power supply increases. Unfortunately on hardware monitor you can't monitor the 5 volt or 12 volt rails, we've only got the 3.3 volt rail, but it does give us a good indication of the CPU load and also we have the GPU load down here. So we'll get Fermat going, there's our furry donut. We'll also start Prime95 so we load up the CPU as well and then we just keep an eye on the load, keep an eye on the temperatures, and we'll take a look at that fan speed on the actual power supply and see how we cope. We're almost 10 minutes in, everything still looks good. 3.3 volt is pretty close to 3.3 volt. We'll check the other voltages in a second. The fans have been spinning pretty quick. The CPU is at 100% load, it's dissipating almost 70 watts. And the GPU will be dissipating about 250 watts. The fans are on 100%. The power supply fan is spinning at 1700 RPM, which is significantly faster than before, so it's good to know that it's thermally controlled. So as the power supply temperature increases, the fan will compensate for that. Here's our 12 volt rail under load. And our 5 volt. Here's our 12 volt rail. And you can see voltage spikes happening every now and again. This is far from ideal, this is not what you want. This is showing 1 volt per division. This is a reasonably slow time base as well, and you can just see every now and again a wild fluctuation in voltage, so that's far from ideal. The uh, reason is probably cheap, poor circuit design, along with very tiny capacitors, which just cannot do the job. So here's our 5 volt rail. Unsurprisingly, it is better because there's not much load on the 5 volt. How would I sum this power supply up? Well, I certainly would not use it in a decent build or any build that you would want to actually use. I probably will be ripping this out of the computer because I just don't really trust it. So another thing to be wary of with these power supplies is the insulation and the primary and secondary windings on the actual transformers inside of them. 
So we have no idea who built the power supply or the transformers, they could be very dodgy. I would rather use a more expensive power supply, which is safer, better built, has better circuit design, more efficiency, power factor correction, synchronous rectification, bigger heat sinks, and more suppression. So that's pretty much my take on it. I probably wouldn't buy another one of these. I think they're not that good, unless you're just mucking about like I am. So here's the circuit board. This is where the transformer used to be, and I've actually desoldered that. There's also a capacitor here, which uh, on this side we have live, and in this side is the 12 volt output. So uh, there is a capacitor between those two sides, so potentially if this capacitor was to fail, you could get mains voltage onto the secondary side of the transformer, which can do some serious damage. But this looks like a class Y capacitor, which is good. A lot of the capacitors and some poorly made power supplies do not have the uh, class Y safety rating, so good to see. The isolation distance looks good, so we have a generous amount of uh, creepage distance between this live side, and it carries on past these opto couplers, and also there's a 5 volt transformer underneath this circuit board here. Carries along here, so there's nice generous distance between the two. So heat from a heat gun helps to separate the ferrite core from the actual transformer. So these pins down here, these are on the secondary side, and these pins over here are on the primary side. And as you can see, this winding here, this will be on the live side of the power supply. The only thing that's really insulating it is the uh, black tape underneath and also the lacquer on the insulation. Here's our secondary winding. As you can see, there's several wires paralleled up to increase the current carrying capabilities. Also, there's only a few turns on the side, being a lower voltage, so the higher voltage live side will have far more turns to step the voltage down. So this is the secondary winding removed. As you can see, we have one more winding underneath that layer of tape, and this winding is on the live side. So again, the only thing that's insulating the uh, windings is just basically this insulation tape, and also the lacquer on the windings. So if this transformer was to get hot, insulation could potentially break down and cause a uh, fault current to flow from the primary side to the secondary. There's the uh, second half of that primary winding. As you can see, this pin right here where my thumb is, that is not actually connected to the circuit board, so that is a center tap. So half of, this, half of the primary winding is on the inside of the transformer, and the other half is on the outside, over the top of the secondary. So having a look at the copper wire that they use to wind this transformer, if you actually scrape it with a knife, you can tell it's not copper. It's actually silver underneath, which indicates that this is aluminium, which is unfortunate. I did think that was the case when I was unwinding it because it felt very soft and very light. Um, it looks copper because they do electroplate it in copper, but that's only to help solder it adhere to the windings themselves. Unfortunately, being aluminium, it will have a higher resistance, which means that the transformer will put out more heat and it will be less efficient. I don't know how well it will show up on camera, but you can see there's some more aluminium there underneath that copper colour. It's got a very silver grey look to it. So that's unfortunate. The quality of the transformer is not that great. The insulation is marginal at best. So yeah, with the quality of the components in this power supply, I would not want to be running it in a computer. New or old is a bit of a uh, bit of a hazard. I'm sure the components are well and truly stressed out, and uh, I just don't really trust it to be honest. So I do not recommend this power supply. I'm going to be uh, definitely not buying another one of these. Thanks for watching.